Hi YouTube. <laughs> so, I have uploaded my STL files for the bulldozer um, and already we ran into a problem. Apparently, uh, the Chinese salesman that I usually buy from, he's run out of chains. And we are struggling to find the same chains anywhere else. So that got me thinking, uh, maybe we should try to convert the dozer files or make a conversion to accept the other chain type, you know, the rounded one. I'll try to explain uh, as good as I can. Uh, I got both chains here. I'll show you the differences first. So here's the two chains. Uh, excuse the mess, I didn't have time to clean it. So this is the difference between the chains. These are the ones that I usually uh, use. As you can see, they're flat here, which may, makes them very easy to slide across bearings and stuff. While these are rounded, which means they can't slide across bearings because then the dozer will start jumping up and down. <clears throat> Let me show you. I've got, I've already tested my new design on this dozer. So this is the parts that was on the dozer before. And when I put them on the old chains, you know, it slides very good because the chain is flat. What happens when I do this? Yeah, see, it's just jumping all around. So, so I'm going to show you what I did or what I think might be the solution. Let me just grab a chair. Okay. So I designed new parts. Uh, these are the running gear for the dozer. These are what keeps the uh, idle wheels and the rollers underneath. What I did was I removed the rollers underneath. So here's the steel plate that I will glue on the bottom of this piece. This is sort of a skid plate where in theory the chains will slide underneath. This will work with both chains. The downside is that this will get worn out after I don't know how long. So that's why I'm going to have to test this thing before I release it. Personally, I think this will work very good because the, the amount of stress and the low RPM of these motors means that this won't be worn out as quick. Well, that's my theory anyway. So I'm going to install these parts uh, on the other side and run this dozer for quite a while with this new setup before I give out the files. I have to make sure that this works. Here you can see the old, old tracks. So, so here I have uh, switched on the dozer and it looks like that these chains are running uh, pretty smooth actually. It doesn't appear to have much friction underneath here. I even ran it on the floor and everything looks good. So So that's the quick and easiest solution, I think, to this problem. Or at least until the old chains come back out on the market. Um, the seller told me... Uh, I'll show you the mail that he son sent me. So this is the mail that he sent me. He says, Dear friend, I'm very sorry that I have just been notified that this product is out of stock. And he also says that Production has shut down because of the epidemic. I, I guess he means the pandemic. So I decided to go all out 
and make new track pads and paint them so that I can keep the old ones for a new doser later. I had a few laying around already, so I mounted these up. I'm going to finish painting and I'll assemble the tracks and then let's get this thing up and going. It's the next day and the parts are ready to be mounted onto the chassis. Uh, I, I think this is a good opportunity to show you the steps of putting the chains or the tracks onto the chassis. Now for this process uh, I like to put the dozer on the 2x4 uh, so it, it's elevated from the ground. That makes it much easier to mount the tracks. So what you do first, you put this into position. You want to put this chain on top of the sprocket. That way you can slide this frame underneath the sprocket. I'll show you. Put your thumb up here, grab the chain, put it on top of the sprocket like this, press down on this and pull it underneath the sprocket. Like this. Now you can see the sprocket is almost in place already. The next step, you put your fingers underneath here and lift this chain on top of the sprocket. There you go, and it's in place. Now you mount the screws through here and do the same process on the other side. Now remember the longer, the longest rod goes on the rear and the shortest rod goes on the front. So the dozer has been converted to rounded chains, as you can see there. Now I'm going to plug in the battery and test run it on the bench. I'll put you guys right here. Give me all you've got If you're prepared to break the silence I'll be out in the sunshine Running the side the lions I've been feeling down but I've been looking up Afraid to fall it looks promising uh, as you can see it's uh, very smooth and it it seems to be working great so what I'm going to do I'm going to test run this for quite a while I'll run it through at least five batteries just to see how much wear we get on that steel plate and we'll take it from there I'm going to take the doser to a location nearby and they have a lot of gravel and stuff there, so I brought a lot of batteries as well, so I can run there for a, quite a while and test it. <laughs> so here I am. As you can see, this is a construction yard or a boat yard. No, sorry, a shipyard. That's what it is. And they use this site to dump a lot of gravel and big rocks got a lot of stuff here so so there's this perfect little pile that I can test the doser in right here
I think I have to give the dozer a break. Uh, the track on this side is starting to feel slow and I'm guessing that the motor is getting hot. Uh, running in this sludge for this long, it's quite a heavy load on the dozer, so let's give it a little break. So it's getting late in the evening and the dozer has finally dried out. <laughs> it was so full of mud and slush that I just had to leave it for about five hours before it dried out. So here you can see. Now I can uh, take it apart and look at how much wear uh, we had on the steel slides. And I'm very happy with the performance of this dozer, even without the, the rollers underneath. I'm very curious about how much wear there is. So let's take it apart and have a look. So looking at the tracks on the left side of the dozer, as you can see, they're full of uh, dirt and clay. So that might be the reason why this motor was having some smaller issues on the on the end of the testing now i don't recommend uh, that you drive the dozer in these conditions that i just did now i did uh, take this outside uh, for about three hours ago and test it to make sure that the motor was okay and it was working the way it was supposed to be again so it just needed to cool down. So let's take it apart.
Here you can see the wear on the steel plate. Yeah, this is not worn out at all. Um, you can see where the chain has been in contact with the steel, but there's not really any grooves. Now this one looks like it has been in contact with some clay and it looks much more dirty than the other one. Hmm. I cleaned the tracks on the inside. As you can see, <laughs> all of this was on the inside of those tracks. After just a couple of hours of running the dozer in, the, in that kind of slush. So I put the dozer back together again. Um, it's running smoothly. Now before taking it outside for a little test run again, after cleaning the tracks, I'm going to test it on the bench. I have uh, a bucket right here, it's filled with uh, wheel weights. And this is about 5 or 6 kilograms right there. If the dozer can move it, I guess. Cleaning the tracks worked because, as I said earlier, this motor on this side it was uh, getting slow and cloggy, so I think it was because of the dirty tracks. Yeah, no problem there. So I'm going to take it outside. Yeah, cleaning the tracks definitely helped. Well, after cleaning the tracks, uh, the dozer definitely seems to be working perfect again. So, I think that this conversion is working very well and I will release the files for it so you can now use the rounded chain with this with these parts at least we have uh, a few options now to choose from the best one is of course the flat chain with the bearings underneath but anyway that's it for this video and I want to say thank you to everyone who supported me by buying the files for this dozer and I can't wait to see what you guys do with it and I also want to thank everyone for a thousand subscribers <laughs> I, I definitely didn't see that coming so well I do hope that you guys find this conversion helpful and that this will be an easy solution for the missing chains Anyway, I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.